Good morning, Jill. Okay, Ryan, I'm on early. Hey, Ryan. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully, uh, no issues today. Sorry about last Saturday. The problem ended up with me going dark. Uh, my camera, for some reason, just switched, which is like 10 feet that way. It just went into a different mode all by itself. It's kind of weird. So I switched it to... Uh, I usually don't leave my cameras in automatic mode. I'm, I'm more of a manual guy. But um, I put it in automatic and that fixed the problem. So who knows? Hi, Jill. I see you. How is everyone this Saturday? Good, I hope. If you're here, be sure and check in. Let me know who you are, where you're from. Are you from YouTube land? Are you from Mighty land? Are you from Facebook land? Good morning, Diana. From Phoenix. How's the weather in Phoenix? Hot, warm, good morning Lisa, yeah we're ready for Christmas for sure, we, uh, we braved Costco yesterday, <laughs> that was an adventure, it started with parking, that was an adventure. Then we walked or hiked our mile to get to the front door. Hey, Rhonda Baker, or Raver. But I wanted to go to Costco, in case you guys didn't know. Um, I kind of spoiled some myself. I bought myself an Apple Watch because I had already bought my wife one for Christmas. She knows. And I wanted one too. And she didn't have the uh, the means to get me one, so I just went and got it myself. And the reason I wanted to do that, one, I wanted us to have matching watches, but two, uh, I didn't know this until yesterday, the Apple Series 9 and Ultra 2 watches are going to be banned as of tomorrow. Can't buy them anymore. So I was shocked and... Uh, I rushed to Costco to get one, and they were going out. There were very few left. Diana says it's been raining in Phoenix. Dehydrating bananas and apples. Cool. That sounds good. Happy holidays from Mojave, California. Now that sounds hot. Good morning, Marilyn. Oh, Lavender, I'm glad you like French onion soup. I hope you like this one. And you're welcome. I got something uh, better today, I promise. This will be the des uh, dessert. Hey, Brenda. Welcome, Canada. So anyway, and I have to tell you, it was the sweetest story because we, we, we've heard of these stories before. We don't see them that often anymore. But we were in Costco. I was in line. Uh, there were long lines at Costco. I had the one item. I had my watch. And the gal in front of us who had a full cart, she says, just so you know, there's a gentleman over here around the corner that's behind me. So you'll actually be behind him. His cart was too big to fit where I was standing. And uh, she looked at me and she says, you just got the one item? I said, yeah, just this one thing. She goes, you can go ahead of me. I thought that was so sweet. People don't seem to be that nice anymore. But she was lovely. And she let me cut in front of her. And we had a nice conversation. Uh, she was a grandma. 
me and my wife were there, we're grandparents, we talked about our grandkids, and it was just a very nice Christmas gesture, and I loved it. I loved it. So we are officially 9 o'clock. We're starting soon. Let's see who, I can never remember how to tell how many people are on. There we go, 21 people on. Be sure and give uh, that thumbs up and a like. Let me know you're here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The second printing of the books, if you haven't heard. My new cookbook is out. The first one sold out. The second printing is happening right now. I will, uh, ooh, sorry for the glare. There we go. I'll get these books in my possession middle of January, and then I'll start shipping. There's about 250, 260 uh, books left. So if you haven't got your copy yet, time to order. People are loving it. Really good reviews. Oh, and after the first of the year, the price does go up to what it says here on the uh, $24.95. So you can still get it for $21.95 up until the first, and then it goes up. Mona got her book. Yay, Mona. Diana loves her Apple Watch. I'm, I got a lot to learn on it, that's for sure. All right, so get the book. I'll put the link down below. It's just shop.brandnewvegan.com. If somebody wants to add a link in here, that would be great. Um, otherwise, I can add it at the end of this and put it in the description below. Very good book. And I'm going to plug it in the microwave. I'm going to try to plug it in the microwave. That's not fitting very good. I may unplug the Christmas lights just to get the uh, microwave. Oh, well, that would help. Dum dum. There we go. Now I got it. Okay. We're going to make our chocolate mousse. This is your holiday dessert. I don't have many uh, desserts, but I like this one. You're going to eat some silken tofu. Again, with the glare, I'll try to get a good angle here. This is a 16 ounce package. Just make sure it says soft. Even if you can't find silken, make sure it says soft. And I, I always get organic for tofu. Soy is the most GMO crop out there. I'm gonna to toss this right into my blender jar. You don't need to press this. You don't need to drain it. Am I autographing the books? I can, if you ask me nicely. People that ask me, I do. But I am not signing every single one, no. <laughs> There'll be way too many. If you leave me a note and you get a book, I'll sign it for you. So this has a lot of water in it. I'm not gonna drain it or anything. I'm just gonna dump the whole thing in. And it's pretty uh, goopy. That's what silken tofu is all about. It's really, really soft tofu. And just like that. There we go. And we're gonna need some paper towels. Again, sorry for last week's YouTube show. The camera I used decided to whack out on me. It wasn't the software, it wasn't the computer, it wasn't anything else. It was the camera, which is way over there. And it just freaked. I have no idea why. Next thing we're going to need for this is chocolate. And I'm using the Ghirardelli bar. 
It's 100% cacao. Now, if you don't know this, the chocolate we're used to here in America is sweetened chocolate. They add a ton of sugar. Some Usually they add a ton of milk fat for milk chocolate. This is just pure cacao. It's not sweet. It's very bitter. And uh, that is a four ounce. I don't know why the camera is so... Oh. There we go. It's a four ounce bar. Okay. We want three and a half ounces of this. And if you look on the back, it'll tell you that... Two sections is one ounce, okay? We want three and a half ounces. I'm going to get a, a bowl. I'm going to microwave the chocolate to melt it. You can use a double boiler if you want. I'm going to use my microwave. Good morning, Joe. Diana just bought her silken tofu yesterday. Joe Caperson, where do you get the what? Where do you get what? The tofu in the grocery store. Chocolate in the grocery store. This will be in the baking aisle, the chocolate. Baker's unsweetened. Yes, Mona, that would work. You want unsweetened chocolate. Yes, Brenda, Baker's Unsweetened will work. So it says two sections is an ounce. And you can see how these are, at least on this bar, how they're sectioned off. So one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, three and a half. I'm going to leave one little square. I'm not going to use that little square. And my cutting boards are all in use. Do I have one down here I can use? Uh, problems, problems, problems. Sorry for turning my back on you. I need my cutting board. There we go. The tofu also you want to have at room temperature. It just helps make it smooth and creamier than compared to uh, it being refrigerated. Okay. So I want all of that minus one square. I'll put him over here. I'm going to break these up. There we go. And into my bowl. When you microwave these, if you microwave them, again, you can use a double boiler to melt chocolate. Uh, if you microwave them, go very easy, like half power. Check it every few seconds, stir it up. You don't want this to, to burn. It's already bitter. Into the microwave I go. It says, uh, let's see, power level. Power level five for one minute. We'll try that. Don't think I need the knife anymore. I'll get to your comments in just a second. Clean up my mess here. Somebody posted a real funny Facebook meme about making a recipe and their kitchen was a disaster. I'm one of those clean as you go kind of guys. I can't stand having a mess in my kitchen. The chocolate bars may also be sold on the candy aisle. You can check there for Lisa for sure. Um, unsweetened cacao powder. You know, Diana, I have not tried that. You can try it if you want. 
I have not tried it though. This is the only way I have done it. I don't know why you couldn't. Now see, that's just beginning to melt there. So we'll put that back in. Another power level five. The other ingredients, because this is not sweetened at all with no sugar, I'm going to use maple syrup. And I'm going to flavor it just a little bit with some vanilla. If I go ahead and pull this out. And make sure it figures it has a childproof lid. Because we have to have childproof lids on everything. And I'm using totally the wrong kind of knife to pull this off. So Dai says she has used unsweetened cacao powder in a similar recipe. So there you go. You can try that. It sounds like it will work. I just stab this. Get it off. Thank you all so far for the uh, anniversary wishes. Today is my wife and I's 27th wedding anniversary. She's put up with me for 27 years. Can you believe that? How do you get these things open without killing yourself? There we go. Jeez, what a pain. Now we got it. Could I use homemade date paste? Bona, I would try that. I would. Any kind of sweetener. Traditionally, in our American chocolate bars, we have sugar, right? High fructose corn syrup, God knows what else they use. But I think date paste would be a good alternative to try. Thank you, Di. Thank you, Lavender. Okay, let's check our chocolate. Oh yeah, see it's starting to melt. So I'm going to get maybe a whisk. There we go. Yeah, it's starting to get really soft. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and if you haven't uh, tasted unsweetened chocolate, very, very bitter. I'll weigh this right here. Very bitter. All right. I don't think I need to cut him board anymore. So, let your tofu and the chocolate come to room temp. I already did that. I pulled my tofu out of the refrigerator about an hour before I started this. Uh, break up the chocolate, place it in the microwave safe bowl. We're doing that now. Melt your chocolate, half power, until it's smooth and creamy, again, right now. Uh, and you can use a double boiler. Use short 30 second intervals so the chocolate does not burn. This is a really low power microwave, so I'm using a full minute. Stir often. Once the tofu is at room temp, blend it in the maple syrup until smooth. So we'll do that next. Oh, yeah, we'll let this just sit here and melt. You can see, very nice. 
So I use four tablespoons of maple syrup to get the sweetness that I like. You can use however little or as much as you want. Again, you don't have to use maple syrup. If you want to try date paste, try that. If you like um, some other kind of sweetener, agave maybe, try that. I like maple syrup. So there's one. If you want to use sugar, if you're not afraid of sugar, I know a lot of people don't like to use sugar anymore. Uh, you can try that. You can do half and half. Whatever you want to do to make it taste good for you. There's three and four. So yeah, we were married in a little winery in New Mexico, in Albuquerque, right on the river. I don't think it's there anymore. But it was already decked out for Christmas, so <laughs> it saved us a lot in decorations. Hopefully this is plugged in and on. There we go. Great. So I'm just going to blend the tofu and the maple syrup. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Diana. So, Dice says she's used date paste before, and she likes it for herself, but you do get a bit of a date flavor, which her family doesn't like, so then she uses the maple syrup for them. And Ryan does both sugar and maple syrup. It's a lot easier on the wallet. I totally understand that. So our tofu is nice and creamy. I'll try and get this under the camera. There we go. And this will set up. We have to put this in the fridge when we're done to let it set. So now, back to the instructions, it says... Uh, Oh, darn it. I forgot to get that out of the counter. Let's see if I can find my phone. Pardon me while I text my wife. I don't want to just leave you. We can add the vanilla, which is um, a teaspoon. She read it, good. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. There we go. My assistant will be here in just a minute with the uh, PB2, the peanut butter. You can use regular peanut butter if you want. I like to use the PB2, the powdered, has a lot less fat. <laughs> my voice, oh boy. I used to do all my cooking videos in the old days, the ones here on YouTube, uh, 
with a voiceover later. I've had a lot of people comment on my voice. They say I have a Morgan Freeman voice. I don't know about that. <laughs> hi, Rhonda. I'll tell her you said hi, Brenda. And just by letting that chocolate sit, it's completely melted, so we're good to go there. Wonderful. And then you could top this. Once we get it all done, we'll put it in a bowl. You let it set. I like to use individual bowls, like these little ramekins, to pour each one full. Put them in the refrigerator. And let them set. I got this, but I can't find the towel. That's fine. We'll use that. Okay. Thank you. I can't. That's okay. You couldn't find a PB2, so we're going to use peanut butter. It'll have a little bit more fat, but that's all right. We'll do about a tablespoon. And that's my fault for not getting everything ready when I went on. I had everything but the PB2. It's about a tablespoon, I think. This is my grandson's peanut butter. Hopefully he won't mind. No, it's not the healthiest peanut butter either, but it's what he will eat. We have to buy stuff with what he'll eat because he's that picky. Okay. Definitely need more paper towels now. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> That's funny. I don't think so, but if you guys do, I'm okay with it. I know we have PB2 upstairs in the cabinet. We'll have to go find it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit here. It don't take much. It's more flavoring than anything else. But it's definitely a lot cleaner using PB2. Yeah, this is a goopy mess. All right, let's add our chocolate. So I can have my bowl back. I'll go ahead and blend this up. Then we'll add our chocolate. All right. Then we add our chocolate. Yeah, traffic yesterday, everywhere we went, we went to a few different stores trying to finish our Christmas shopping for our, our, our daughter, my stepdaughter, and uh, her, her son, my grandson. I'm going to switch to the this guy and get some more of that peanut butter off and the rest of the chocolate. But, but yeah, traffic and the crowds were just horrendous yesterday. I think we'll call that good. Get up our messy spoons in there and our whisks and try to clean up our mess. Oh boy. 
There we go. I try to get everything down here I'm going to need because again, this is not my kitchen. That's upstairs. This is just my studio office and uh, if it's not down here, <laughs> I have to uh, improvise. So I try to pre-plan everything I'm going to need. I don't always. so good. There you guys go. Look at that. Oh, I mean, you missed some right there. I guess we could go one more round of blending, but this will be fine. I just tasted it. Mm. It's creamy, it's smooth, it's just sweet enough. Hi, Peter Brown. Peanut butter and chocolate match made in heaven. So what I would do with this next, put it in the fridge, let it set for, do I say, half an hour to an hour, and then right before you serve, Get some fresh berries, raspberries, chocolate or uh, blackberries. And if you want, take that last little bit of chocolate, that square, and kind of shave it a little bit and sprinkle the shavings on top. Oh man, that is so good. Can you taste the peanut butter? Somebody said. Um, And you can see, I'm just going to, you can see how this is. It's, it's really thick, right? You can eat it just like this, but if you refrigerate it, it'll set better. I do not taste the peanut butter at all. I taste chocolate. It's really, really good. <laughs> I'm going to set it aside before I get in trouble. Yeah, but take this leftover square of chocolate we didn't use and just take a paring knife, make some small shavings, sprinkle that on top with whatever kind of berry you like. And um, yeah, here's your chocolate mousse, guys. Christmas dessert. Mmm. Mmm. Can you freeze? in the pops for kids. That's an idea. I have never tried it. I don't know. I'm not sure it would freeze well, to be honest. I've never tried it. Um, if you try it, Diana, don't waste it all. Make the recipe, serve it as a mousse, but take one little portion and try to make a freezer pop out of it, just to test and see if it works. Uh, would shelf stable silken tofu work? I think so, Jill, I really do. So Peter Brown, where's Guernsey? Where is that? And how many people we got? 44 people, nice. Welcome everyone. 
32 wipes. And we're right on time. We got about 15 minutes. You want to do a Q&A, we can talk about whatever you want. The chocolate mousse is finished. We can talk about the books, the recipes in the books. People have asked me to list every recipe that's in the book. Um, I've got 13 categories in the book. We have appetizers and snacks with a few recipes in each. Some bread recipes, biscuits, stuff like that. Dips and spreads. I have a... Um, that looks really good. Do you happen to have a good hot chocolate recipe on your site? I didn't see one, but maybe you need to look. I do not have a hot chocolate recipe, TS. I don't. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'll switch the camera so you can see the categories. This is what's in my book. So you can decide if that looks interesting enough to, to buy if you haven't bought one yet. Again, they're going to be the same price, $21.95, up until January 1st. Then they go up a few bucks. There's about 250, 260 books left. If I ever run out of the second print, I'll do a third print. But I'm not ordering, obviously, thousands and thousands of books all at one time. One, I can't afford to do that. And uh, that's why it's all pre-sales. So the money that I get for the pre-sales is what helps me purchase the books, right, and pay for the shipping. I have shipped to Canada. I have shipped to Australia, New Zealand, UK, and even Israel, I think. So this is international. Uh, these are all the favorite recipes. I asked people, I polled the different people from the different groups, the YouTube group, I think, and the Facebook group for sure, my Mighty group, my support group, which recipes should be included. So the tacos that are in there and the, um, the hot sour soup, the Mongolian soy curls, the pepper steak, the orange chicken, my meatloaf, um, the green chili sour cream, people love that, the yellow pinto, basole, that's what I'm making for Christmas tomorrow, the basole recipe, I, I love basole. Do you think a mousse is thick enough for a pie? I was going to make a walnut crust with pumpkin pie, but chocolate mousse pie sounds easier, no baking. Um... I'm not sure. I think it would be soft. It may be too soft, but you could try it. I mean, make the recipe, and let it set in the fridge. Do this first, let it set in the fridge, let it harden, set, and then decide whether you think an hour later it could go into a pie shell or not. Lavender B says, sometimes dark chocolate has milk added. Check the label. And I am a fan of the Ghirardelli. Yeah, I, I went to Ghirardelli, the, the, the chocolate factory in San Francisco, a long time ago. And I just fell in love with the place, San Francisco, uh, San Francisco in general. And then somebody said, how many recipes are in the book? 125 recipes. And there will be another book. For sure. I haven't started on it yet, but there will be one. Uh, sandwiches, we got dressings, uh, my banh mi, my beer brats, my vegan gyros, the cheese sauce, of course, the gravy, uh, all the favorites. My chili, my best damn vegan chili ever, got the cabbage soup. And the minestrone, and the miso soup, the broccoli cheddar, the three sister stew, um, Irish stew. Yeah, 125 recipes. Yeah, check the label. I'm pretty sure. I dig through the trash and, and get really messy. What did I do with that? 
I could have swore I had the packaging for that chocolate bar. Huh. Yes, I have a banh mi sandwich that was inspired by uh, a trip to Cannon Beach. Cannon Beach has a restaurant uh, right on the water called the Pelican Brewery. Uh, I'm a fan of their brewery. I like their beer, but they have a, a pretty good restaurant too. And they usually have at least two or three different vegan options. And um, this time, one time we went, they had a sandwich. It was a banh mi sandwich and I tried it and it was absolutely wonderful. So I came home and I copied it the best I could. And it's really good. So that's in the recipe book. Um, so I apologize. I guess what Lavender was saying is a different brand than Ghirardelli, the guitar brand. Okay. Because Diana said uh, Gutters is different than Ghirardelli. Okay. And Lisa said you could try freezing the pie to get more firm if you want to use it for a pie. Or to make individual mini pies by using chocolate pan as molds or cupcake pans as molds. That's a good idea. I can tell you what's more. Oh, there it is. I found that chocolate thing. Let's take a look at it. As far as the ingredients in the Ghirardelli, for Fadi and I didn't rip the package so bad, I can't read them. So sometimes there's milk involved. Um, I'm looking. Unsweetened chocolate. And then it says, may contain milk, soy, and tree nut. It may. It may not. That's really clear, isn't it? Thank you, Ghirardelli. So, yeah, look for your label on your chocolate bar to make sure it is pretty clean. But it is sodium free and uh, no added sugar for sure. Dark chocolate does have a bit of fat. So one piece is uh, eight grams of fat and half of that saturated fat. So if you're watching those kind of numbers, be careful with this stuff. This is not an everyday recipe, guys. This is a holiday treat recipe for families coming over on Thanksgiving or Christmas. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. That was actually included in the book in the very beginning, and I'll read it to you. The recipe for the good life. It was part of the cookbook section that I could add these different things, and I liked this so much, I went ahead and added it to the book. So here's the recipe for the good life. A heaping cup of kindness. Lord knows we all could use that right now. Two cups of love and caring, one cup of understanding, and one cup of joyful sharing. A level cup of patience, one cup of thoughtful insight, one cup of gracious listening, and one cup of sweet forgiveness. Mix the ingredients together, toss in some smiles and laughter, and serve to everyone you know with love forever after. I like that too. Uh, the green chili tofu looks amazing. It is really, really good, Diana. I've made that three or four times now. I can make it every day of the week. It's, it's basically like a really stripped down version of a green chili stew. And I love that stuff because I lived in Albuquerque for 10 years. I love their food. Uh, Mom caregiver said, labels say that because it may have been on a, ran down the conveyor belt with the other ingredients. That's why the chocolate bar said may contain milk, tree nuts, etc." And that means they don't have to have a different set of machines to make this bar. I understand. 
Almost every label now says may contain tree nuts just to cover their butt. In case somebody sues them because they get anaphylactic shock, I'm sure. A beautiful holiday message. Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, I like that too. And, and throughout the book, I've also included little quotes from, here's one. It's so beautifully arranged on the plate, you know someone's fingers have been all over it. Julia Child said that. Different people. Cooking is like love. It should be entered into with abandon or not at all. Harriet Van Horn. So yeah, just a bunch of little extras. There's not too many pictures, guys. Only pictures in the book are the ones on the category sections. So there's like 13 pictures. That's it. Joe was born in Albuquerque. Oh, nice. I love Albuquerque, uh, Albuquerque, Jill. I lived in Rio Rancho. I was an Intel guy. And I love Sadie's. I love all things green and red chili and Christmas. I love the Candelarias in Old Town. I love the Balloon Fiesta in October. It's a cool town. But I love the food. So a lot of my recipes are uh, New Mexican in, in general. Copied from the memories I have from when I lived in New Mexico. I have Mexican recipes too, but I have a lot of New Mexican recipes also. All of those things, yes. Well, there you guys go. It's quarter till. Ryan wants to know if a uh, caregiver is her job. I think mom caregiver is a member of our mighty group, Ryan. I think we talk every morning. My granddaughter just moved to Rio Rancho with my great grandson. I hope to visit there. I'm sure it's a lot different now than was when I lived there. When I lived there, it was still young, very young. It's a huge city now. But it was a cool place to live. Uh, Diana, have you considered an ebook version of your cookbook? <sighs> when I started this project, okay, the printer had an option when you purchased the book to also get an ebook version. They stopped doing that. Can I take this book now that I've already had it printed and make an Amazon version on Kindle? I don't know the legalities of that. I think the printer cookbook company has some copyrights to this as well as I, I, I do too. Um, I have to make sure it's okay with them. And then maybe we can make a Kindle version for this and other books, but I have to check into all that stuff. Thank you, Becky. Happy holidays to you. Mom caregiver says, yes, I take care of my adult son. Nice lavender sharing food with another human being. It's an intimate act that should not be indulged in lightly. So we do a live stream every morning for those of you on YouTube that are interested in our mighty group. I just saw a thumbs down come down. That's sad. Um, I'll put the link below if you'd like to join us. We meet every morning at nine. We talk about food and diet and blood pressure and wives and husbands and problems and family and why they listen to us and why they don't try our food and how hard this is to do by yourself and why we need each other to support each other to continue eating this way and trying new things and trying new recipes. We read books together, we watch movies together, uh, lots of stuff. So come on over to our support group. It's bnvcommunity.com. I'll put a link down below when I'm done. Check out the cookbook if you haven't, shop.brandnewvegan.com. It's, um, it's selling quick. Get your coffee now. And um, 
Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Adriana. She made my cranberry sauce and it's delicious. I will be sure and sign it, Diana. Good, good. You all have a wonderful holiday. Safe, loving holiday with your family. There's a lot of weird bugs going around, so be careful with that. My grandson was sick the other day. It doesn't sound too pleasant, so be careful, but be safe with your family. Have a good holiday, and I will see you. What We got one more week before the new year, so I'll be back next Saturday. If you got an idea for a recipe, a New Year's Eve recipe, let me know, and we'll do that next Saturday. You can put it in the comments below. Merry Christmas to all and to all some great meals. I like that. Thank you, Brenda. Happy holidays, Lisa said. Right back at you. My neighbor from the Pacific Northwest. You too, Ryan. You're not too far away. Happy holidays. We will see you next week, guys. Have a Merry Christmas and take care of yourselves. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.